Hey guys, so I wanted to make a video today, which is funny, I never make videos. I kind of want to just try and start up this channel a little bit more. So with that, uh, let's move on. So today's video is about what do I do with my horse while I'm in college? And I definitely think that this is a very relatable topic to some people, especially if you're like a senior and you're thinking about going to college but you're not sure what you want to do with your horse. Stay tuned. I'm gonna start off with some facts that you probably don't wanna know but are kind of important for this particular video. I am currently a broke college student. I attend SDSU, not San Diego State, or talk about South Dakota State. We beat the NDSU Bison yesterday. It's a great day to be a jackrabbit. I am currently an animal science major. I'm around 45 minutes away from Donut right now. And I am currently unemployed because I took 18 credit hours this semester, which was stupid and psychotic. Bio 151 sucks if anybody wants to know. It's terrible. You will die. Furthermore, let's just move on to the stuff you actually came to watch this video for, which is how do I cope living in college while owning a horse? As I said before, I am unemployed right now, which I thought was definitely gonna be a possibility for me to be employed once I got to South Dakota State University. I figured, yeah, it's gonna be good, but credit hours, it's very difficult. College is all like way different than anything that I experienced in high school. And it was definitely an adjustment. If I had not taken AP courses, I believe I totally would not have been ready. That would have been terrible. But I am making it mostly with A's and B's, so working your butt off does pay off, but just be prepared. I left my horse at home. I'm such a bad horse mom. I'm such a bad owner. You even miss your horse? Of course I miss my horse. Oh my god. There are days where I get so worked up and I'm like, if I could just go out and ride my horse right now, everything would be okay. And I was a really good benefit to having him like 10 minutes away from my house here because if I had a bad day at school, if I had a bad day in general, he was always there. If I was having a bad day, going out and riding Donut would save it for me. I can't do that here because, I mean, I could in reality, I'd just have to drive like 45 minutes and... But I'm pretty sure my mind would probably be settled by the time I got here, so there's no point. Also, gas is expensive, so... <laughs> also, I think a really big plus of where he's at right now is there's only two other horses in the pen with him. I really like it when it's a small, small farm because he does better the less horses there are with him. Simply because he does not exactly fight for his food. You would think he would. He's pretty big, but he doesn't. My horse is a pansy. So the smaller the herd is, the more food he can get. Which is good because he's old. And he's a thoroughbred. Which is never a good combination. With where he's at right now, I pay about $75 a month for hay. Plus the $20 for a bag of grain. And he eats about two of those a month. So it's about $115. Guys, I don't pay anything other than that. I just pay for the hay, which is really, really nice. And the lady that keeps that uh, takes care of him right now does excellent care. He gets his grain every day. He gets hay every day. She makes sure that he's not dead every day. It's fantastic. And that's really, really nice and assuring to know that he's in a place that he's not, like, he's getting taken care of. I clean her pens um, every other weekend. That's usually when I come back, so don't get ridden about every other weekend. My biggest advice, I guess, to take away from this entire thing is find a place that takes care of your horse. It's extremely reassuring to know that your horse is taken care of while you're not there because just I'll give you an instance. So about a month ago, uh, I got a phone call from uh, the lady that I keep him out at and she said, I think Donut's colicking this morning. Of course, I'm freaking out. <sighs> I have like three classes to go to this day. It's 9 a.m. It's literally two minutes before like my first class starts. And she's like, yeah, I think he's calling. And I'm like, okay. Uh, she's like, do you want me to call the vet? And I was like, yeah, call the vet. I mean, do whatever you can just to keep him comfortable until I come back. If something, if, like, if the decision needs to be made, I want to be there, you know? So just keep him comfortable until I get there, which would have been after two o'clock because that's when my last class ended. And basically what came along with like that is Obviously, yeah, it sucks, but also, I don't think if I had kept him just about anywhere else, I don't think anywhere else would have called me. The other places that I've had him at, <laughs> Claude didn't even have my phone number. If something went down, he'd just tell me, like, the next day, because Donut's had stomach issues. I don't want to go into it, because it'll take a whole other video to explain that. I don't even know what's wrong with his stomach, but basically, what happened was he was fine. That ended up not needing to come out, because he pooped shortly after she called me. So... We don't really know what triggers it. Um, I used to have him on a probiotic and that stopped it from happening, but 
I took them off the probiotic because the feed that I have them on right now currently has the probiotic in it, but apparently it must not be enough, so currently is on the probiotic again, and we haven't had an issue since. What I'm saying is, it's really reassuring to know that he's going to be taken care of and that she knows what I want. She'll do whatever I want as long as, I, you know, like I need to until I get there to make the final decision should something happen. So that's so reassuring, you have no idea. He gets his grain every day, he gets um, an adequate amount of hay every day, that's also very important to me. Heather knows what she's doing, so that's fantastic. He's also out on pasture, he, he does have a stall, I don't... He doesn't need to be in a stall, but he does have a stall, he just never uses it, and he's just out in the pasture. That's pretty much all the advice that I have for you. If you're thinking about um, taking your horse to college with you, you definitely can. But that was the reason why I decided not to take mine to college, because it was expensive, and I wanted to make sure that he was taken care of and why uproot him from a place where he's already doing well, really well. I mean, he's the fattest I think he's ever been right now. That's also because I haven't been riding him, but he's really fat right now. <laughs> Yep, so that's basically the video. Like, comment, subscribe if you want or don't. So I'll see you guys next time. Um, I want to try to get a little bit more active on this channel just because I kind of like doing this kind of stuff. Except, like, it's a good distraction from homework, which I should be doing right now, but I'm not.